to talk us through a little bit about this story that we've heard this morning about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. So uh, just, to, just to, to talk a little bit, unpick it a little bit and see what we can learn from the actions of these three guys. Now we know that Nebuchadnezzar was bigging himself up in, in, a, in an incredible way. The, a, 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 a huge empire, uh, a powerful emperor, uh, totally sovereign over his people. And he decided to really show off. And a huge statue of himself, for which people had to worship and bow down. Now here was Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego saying no, no. And I just want to unpick that. By the way, when we were doing this, Sandra and I asked the question, where was Daniel? It's his book. What was he doing? Was he, he must have been on holiday at the time. But, but, but I don't know. But anyway, what happened to these three guys? Why did they do it? That's what I want to unpick. And then, what does that mean for us today? There's no point looking at the Bible if we can't apply it to what we're doing now. And that's what I want us to do. So, I'm hoping it's... Oh, there we are. So, actually, uh, the first bit I want to talk about, the boys stand firm. The boys stand firm. And they did really well. Really well to stand firm, because actually when they did that, they stood out from the crowd. Everyone's on their knees, and they're up. They're going to stand out like a sore thumb, aren't they? I really, really stand out from the crowd. Everyone's going to see, but they haven't done what they've been asked to do. That everybody's been doing this. Why aren't they? They stood out. They really got noticed. They got noticed by important people. The officials noticed them. So this they weren't at the back of the crowd standing up by the wall saying, I'm just leaning, really. They were there, not bowing down. And important people noticed them. Not just the ordinary ones, the officials noticed them too. How they did that, because they should have been bowing down, but I don't know. <laughs> but they did get noticed. They were called before the king. Their actions were so radical and so revolutionary that the king wanted to know what on earth was going on. Why are you not conforming to society? Why are you being different? And he was angry. He was angry. They made their case before the king. And we're going to look at that in a minute, so I won't say too much about that now. But they made their case. They had an opportunity to influence the head of state. It's not often we get that, is it? But they had an opportunity to influence the head of state. And they took the consequences. They didn't whine and whinge that it's not fair. It's not right. It's not morally just. They took the consequences because they lived in a land where if that was the law, that's what happened if you did that. They did it. They knew their actions were going to get them into trouble, but they did it anyway. That's scary. That's scary. But they did it anyway. Ooh. And in doing so, in doing so, they glorified God. And that's really important, isn't it? Thank you. All right. That's really important to glorify God in the choices that we make. When we make life choices, we need to make sure that it's going to glorify God. Even if that choice is difficult and might have bad consequences for us. But they did it anyway. The boys stood firm. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can't see that, can you? But look, here's the, here's the bit of, the, of the, the passage from Daniel chapter 3. And I want to pick out just a couple of bits here. All right? They actually didn't need to defend their position. They said, we're not going to tell you why. We just did it because actually it's what we believe. I'm not going to argue why, whether we're right or wrong. We did it. And do you know what? We need to do that sometimes, don't we? We're Christians. We don't have to justify our actions to anybody else. It's what's the right thing, according to our conscience. They said, God is able to deliver us. What, what you choose to do is what you choose to do, but our God is able to deliver us from the consequences that you choose to give. Our God is able to do it. He's better than your God. He's better than you. 
Our God is able. It's a powerful statement. God will deliver us. There was a confidence there. God will deliver us. They had complete confidence in their God. Fourthly, and even if, and even if, God chooses not to deliver us, we're still not going to bow down. That's bold as well, isn't it? Because they know then that there's a possibility that their lives might be coming to an end because of their action. But even so, they are choosing to honour God. And that's a tough choice. It's one that most of us in the room probably won't have to face. Some of us will. Some of us already have. So, the boys trust their Lord. That's an important point. Whatever happened in that story, it's about trust and faith. They showed faithfulness. You can see where this is going, can't you? All right? They showed faithfulness. They showed faithfulness to their religion, to their faith, to their customs and traditions. They showed faithfulness to that. They relied. They didn't argue their way out of it. They relied on the sovereignty of God. And God is in control of whatever's going to happen. God is in control. And they were obedient to the laws of their religion, their, their faith that they Their scripture said, do not worship any other idols. They were being obedient to what God had commanded them to do. Do you know what? God came through, didn't he? God came through on that situation. They fully relied on God in that circumstance. Now look, this is all very well and good because this happened like thousands of years ago. What's it got to do with us? What's it got to do with us? Is that going to work? Oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. Come on. It's probably going around the world before it hits there. There we go. So what's our golden statue? There's Oscar up there, look. There's Oscar. What's our golden statue? What is it that we might be tempted to, or asked to, or expected to bow down to in our modern world? It could be money. Money's a big driver in our world, isn't it? It, it, it rules everything. You know? And, and some of us are really tempted to, to, to give in to that, aren't we? It's, it's difficult not to. Whoop. Come on. Oh, there we go. Power. Sometimes we get in a position we might be offered power and authority. And that, that sometimes tempts us to, oh, I've got to have that job. I need that job. I want that influence. I want that state, so status and position. It's tempting, isn't it? That's what we expect. Climb the ladder of success. That's what we're taught. That's what we're taught. But also, we might, be, we might give in to our fears. There might be things going on in here that are really worrying us. We might give in to them. And we might behave in ways we perhaps wouldn't want to or would like to. But actually, we're giving in to those fears that are troubling us. We might give in to those. We are expected to do that. Or, what, or our head's telling us that. We might be expected to give into that popularity game. A lot of people do that. We do things to be popular. We want to be, we want to be within crowd. And so we might do things to get in with people. Yeah? That could be our golden statue that we give into. Pop cup, popular culture. What's happening in the world today? Let's just join in. Let's just join in. And unbiblical values is there. Ooh, that was there. Well, it was there for a second anyway. Unbiblical values. There are things that happen in the world that, that people will say, oh yeah, no, we'll just do that. We don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, fine. And maybe, maybe that could be something for us that, well, okay. We'll just ignore that. doesn't matter. Could be. There could be all sorts, couldn't there? Have a reflect. And what, what's troubling you? What's that statue that could be making you want to bow down to it, to give in to what society wants? Do you know what? We've got some big choices in our lives, haven't we? We've always got to make lots of big choices about values, lifestyle, beliefs, career, and friends, and all those kind of things. And we have to rely as Christians today that we have got God on our side. We need to stand firm. That's what we've been singing about all along, isn't it? Standing firm, relying on God, trusting God. And we need to do that. And do you know when I'm doing this, this verse constantly pops into my head. 
uh, all the time. Uh, it's probably because I learnt it as a kid, but it's one of my favourites. And it just reminds me all the time, trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. If we've got those difficult decisions to make in life, whether we're going to do something or not, something that society tells us we should be, it's expected, but we're not comfortable with, that's a good verse, isn't it? That's a good verse to bring to mind. So, what do we need to do? We need to take a leap of faith sometimes. We need to step out and trust him. And when we do that, we're going to demonstrate our faith to others. We're going to come out. We're going to come out and be Christians. Aren't we? We're going to show our faith to other people. Oh my goodness. All right? But when we do that, God's going to be with us all the time. He'll stand by us. You know, Peter in one of his letters says that, you know, be gentle in the way you approach people and, and you prepare that when you speak about your faith and the Spirit will lead you and tell you what to say. And you will honour God when you do that. You will, you will honour God. But there's a rider to this. You know what? God is with us. But do you know what? Sometimes it's not always going to work. Sometimes God won't bring us out of the fire. He'll keep us in there. And it will be difficult. God doesn't always rescue everybody, does he? But do you know what? The lesson is there that God is with us in the fire and in the flood. Sometimes God chooses to rescue us. And sometimes God chooses to not rescue us. And sometimes that's really hard for us and for other people. But through that... God works wonders in the lives of other people. God works in all sorts of different ways. And this is a very difficult message to swallow, isn't it? But for us as Christians, I think the key message is God is with us. God was with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So let's just reflect. What are our golden statues? I'm going to put that really quick because I'm running out of time. Trust God to help you face them. Try not to give in to them. Take a risk and allow God to be honoured. Stand firm. Make a stand on something. Tell your friends about Jesus. Say, no, I'm not going to do that because actually that, that troubles my spirit. It goes against my, my faith, my, my conscience. Be a witness for Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are always with us. When things are going well, you are with us. When things are going badly, you are with us. You're with us in the fire and in the flood. You're with us in the sunshine and you're with us in the darkness. When we're in the valley, you are with us. When we mess up and when we falter, you are with us. Lift us, Lord, so that we can see your face. Amen.